We're back with Fun Time, Good Show on Deep Ellum On Air, Radio Television Network, Conglomerate, Primetime, CBS, NBC, ASAP. Uh, today in studio, Fox. we have Chris Llewellyn from the Deep Ellum <laughs> Trading Company. I almost said movie Yay! trading company. Yeah. Y'all got it right. <laughs> so, Point um, uh, He's going to say it a little bit later in What's in the Box. But uh, for now, we'd like to talk to him a little bit about what the hell he does. So you're you're adjacent to the studio. Mm-hmm. We see you every day screaming and ranting, keep the kids off your lawn. Mostly. Uh, what At is least the panhandlers? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so what, what does uh, Deep Ellum Training Company so, master uh, in? The, I guess the the line we say is that it, we take local artists and you help, might want to get a little closer. Sorry, we take <laughs> we take local artists and then help merchandise them. So that benefits a bunch of projects in the neighborhood, like the urban gardens, the mural projects. There's a the suicide prevention, the 45 fund that we work with too, and then uh, and there's a few new projects that are starting up. But yeah, it's kind of like the monetary arm that kind of helps out. And it sounds like we need to get in touch. We're, we're horrible at merchandise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I did for years, probably 15 years. I screen printed and did band merchandise. And yeah, where did you get your start? So um, I used to tour with this band called Reverend Horton Heat. And, uh, oh, I've never heard of them. Oh. <laughs> what did you do with the heat? Uh, I sold merchandise. So, oh, okay. So I used to work I at a record. I probably bought T-shirts yeah, from you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I sold. Uh, I worked at a record label for a while, and their guitar tech worked. Which there. one was that? Out of curiosity. Last beat. It was. I know Last Beat. Yeah. yeah, very nice. They did. Uh, they did Chomsky and Rubber mm-hmm. and uh, Rubber Bullet back in the day. Yeah, yeah. And Pink- yeah. Pinkerton. Yep, Pinkston. So, oh, Pinkston. Pinkston that's yeah. yeah. Wife of a. Uh, Vaden. <laughs> yeah, ex wife. Yeah. So great bands, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, wasn't Baboon on there mm-hmm. as well? They oh, did, they did if you've never things. seen Baboon, everybody at home, they yeah. they still occasionally play shows. Yes. It's amazing. You can't find a better band to no, no. see live than Baboon. And one of the unfortunate things is they could never capture that on a on an album. No. And it was one of the. Them and uh, Brutal Juice were the same way. Like, <sighs> yeah. you could never do it. And uh, and then the closest thing to it is John Congleton. He was from the Paper Chase, and he's yeah. done a huge amount of albums now, and he's like Grammy winning guy now. And uh, but he got the right album for them. It's it's like an EP that they did, and it's beautiful. It's it's awesome. So. Wow. So you've you've definitely had your hand in Deep Ellum for a while. For years. I, yeah. And your dick in Deep Ellum, from what I've I've a heard little too. Bit, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> he liked dipping in just the tip. Uh, so you went from there. How did you kind of roll into doing your own your own business? So um, from that, like uh, the the hard part about touring with bands is that you have to uh, find a job when you get home, and so so during that like three months or two months or three weeks or six months, I had to figure out something to do. And that was like the natural thing. So I had a big client already that I could kind of use to kind of, I guess, uh, make my income kind of steady. And then and then I had a bunch of friends because I used to do comps and, and stuff like that around. And, uh, and so that had a bunch of bands. And so probably within a year, I had like 40 bands that I was doing. And then after that, you know, it just kept stepping up and stepping up. And then my biggest client was uh, Hank Williams III. Um, oh, I love Hank Williams. Yeah. And then... Um, and the then, third. I mean, yeah. yeah. I love <laughs> Hank Williams too, but I guess I should clarify. And then uh, uh, Super Joint Ritual was this band that was on OzFest that had uh, Phil Anselmo in it. And so... And Hank Three, And uh, so... Wait, in the same band? Yeah. Them two. And then uh, the drummer for I Hate God was in it too. Wow. That's an odd... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, Shel- it's not that odd because Shelton is Hank Three, and he they do like a half speed metal set and half country set so it's kind of it makes sense when i don't you know believe that. i've ever heard that that sounds like something i'm gonna have yeah. to get into yeah that's so, awesome so anyway so from that um it built up and then uh, i had a uh, kind of like a i put all my eggs in one basket everything crashed and then and then uh, i ended up getting a second job and then that kind of spun me out down here so so and that's that's what i'm doing is i'm running a, a t-shirt shop out of there too uh, or my screen printing shop out of there as well and then and then that's helping me do this do, do you do anything other than t-shirts i mean you said merchandising so what is generally so for, let's say for the people that don't know what merchandising is what what does that fall under what does that cover so it's really anything with that you can sell like either at a merch table or at a booth or whatever else and it's not really with <laughs> so it even goes with prints you know and and uh up to like some of the things that we're developing like um bottle openers or coasters or or um there's an axe that we're going to uh, make a coat <laughs> hanger out of so um but those are all branded or developed around someone's art so um so either using um elements of that art into the the thing or using that as an influence to what we uh, to what we make is kind of how we're trying to do it so we take a local artist 
build all this merch around them. Now they have a wholesale outlet. They also have a way to get income. And then they also have a, a way to popularize them and teach them about all that. And they take the $400 painting that what they would have only got $400 out of and make something that they can get. So you do handle groups of besides a band, you know, you handle artists, That's, I guess shows, stuff like this, right. anything that really wants to brand itself. And so with the deep Island trading company, it's all about artists. It's only about artists. And, and, I'm taking the knowledge from what I've known before and applying it to just that. So it's strictly art. Okay, so no bands now or no, something like that. Anymore, but no. you do the T-shirts and stuff for anybody yeah. that, that wants yeah, yeah. them. Okay, well, that's yeah. cool. So, so where are you hoping to kind of take this? So the guys who are co-hosts, feel free to ask any other questions. <laughs> You've actually asked decent questions yeah. today. That's kind of unnormal. Uh, uh, so the goal, the goal is to uh, step up uh, the store into what it is now, into a mobile store as well, and then go into a web presence. So we'll build a brand called Deep Island Texas. That'll be like an entry level um, artist brand. So that will kind of popularize the neighborhood. Um, and it's all from the community association. So the goal is to be a, a, a promotional tool for the neighborhood. So and 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 if we can kind of become like um, that neighborhood in Miami or the Brooklyn one, stuff like that, the, where we can kind of get it to where these artists are known as these deep alum artists right. and it helps just helps being associated with us as a man who came from deep alum back in the day you know yeah. the 90s and if you're talking you know last beat records and stuff like that you were right. you were around here at the same time when i was back here playing right what, what what's your feeling on how what deep elm's kind of gone through i mean i remember there was time friday or saturday nights where you could come down here and you could get stabbed mug or have yeah. the best night of your life watching yes. 10 bands yeah and you could walk down the street and see goss people dressed as vampires ravers and it was packed and for a while they didn't even have the police it was just right. you know it was shoulder to shoulder people who wanted to see artists musicians um Unfortunately, some of them wanted to come and punch out other people, too. Right. Um, then there was, you know, where they had to bring in all the cops. Mm -hmm. After those, I think there were like three shootings and two, something, yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, and now it's, you know, it was a ghost town for a while. You yeah. know, I come down on Friday, Saturday night. And it was so depressing to me as a guy who came from the 90s. You know, you could book a show at Liquid Lounge and you're guaranteed to have 100 people stopping and watch you just walking by. Right, right. Um but how do you feel? Is there, I, I feel like there's a little bit of resurgence coming back. I see newer clubs opening. Right. Um, it seems like it's a little busier on Friday or Saturday nights now. How do you feel? Is a the the history kind of of what you've seen? What do you think? So it's a it's become a different element that's here. So you ha you still have your kind of nightlife and and all the kids that grew up here during the '90s and the '80s and stuff still have that element here. So that's there's punk rock bands, there's uh, hardcore bands, there's metal, there's um, artsy bands and there's art galleries and all that nightlife is still here it's not gone anywhere and it's bigger than it was yeah i guess the i guess i got the feeling that people for a while were scared of coming or... that was that was totally a thing so mm -hmm. in after the drop you know it got really sparse a lot of people moved out trees shut down stuff like that but um well, there also used to be more living here. I mean, there were right. a lot of people lived in Deep Ellum, so it was, hey, I'm going to go to watch clubs tonight. I'm literally going to walk two blocks, get tipsy, and just walk home. And, right. and now I don't I don't know a single person that lives here. When well, I used to know yeah. 20. You yeah. Know. Yeah. Clinton does, but that's the point. Well, yeah. I mean, that's my point. Okay, so one, but you right. know, I used to know 20 people that lived. You could call them up and be like, hey, we're going to be at this club tonight, and they'll come out to watch you. Because it's one block away, right. you know. There's so there's more of that now because they built the the new buildings and stuff like that, and then uh, and then I see it all the time because I'm involved in the community association. So those are the people that I deal with every day. So there there are tons more people down there than I feel living down here than that were because of like the new developments of the lofts and things like that. So. One of the interesting things is I was talking to. Um, I guess until about a year ago, Barry ran the Deep Ellum mm -hmm. Foundation. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm friends with wit and some of the guys at the curtain club yeah, yeah. and surprisingly what they told me was the one thing they fa they saw as, as business owners that kept causing problems was the opening of dance clubs because that started yeah. bringing an element of the people that kind of wanted to get drunk and fight mm -hmm. it wasn't they weren't artists they right. weren't musicians and they actually as, as hard as they could started trying to get ordinances passed where if you weren't performing live music they were trying to actually keep you out of deep elm if you want a bar but it turned out that was the element they kept saying every time there was a shooting every time there was a fight every time it was at a place where they would just it, it was no artists you yeah. would come and just well, dance and get drunk and, and think do about drugs. why that happens yeah it's people that are going to dance looking to get laid you know oh you know i'm there with my boyfriend girlfriend whatever and somebody tries to dance with that person and then yeah. that starts a fight 
Yeah. Like, and they also found that to... more people did drugs. Like people would yeah. smoke pot and gum. Whatever, it's America. But they found that dance clubs there was more cocaine use. Mm-hmm. Uh, whenever they would get raided, you know, they would there would be cocaine. It'd be harder drugs, heroin and stuff like that. XTC. Where at the XC, where at the club, you know, with the the live music venues and the bars, it was you know best pot. You know, and so yeah. they they were finding there was a lot more aggression at all of these places, which I mean, in retrospect, thinking about it, that makes sense. But I don't think I ever put that together when I was younger that every time because the dance clubs just kept turning over, right. well, over I, and yeah. over again. They're all cash based and a lot yeah. of them are run by people who run drugs. So that's kind of the deal. So it, it's an easy way to like, um, what is that? Launder Make, money. Yeah. Launder yeah. Money. That makes sense. And so um, they also got rid of a couple of the the owners of prop, property owners here that were taking cash like only doing cash uh leases and stuff like that with no real gotcha. and that's why there was a lot of turnover too mm-hmm. and so some of those property owners are gone and there's um, like 42 or whatever that owns 25 of them and it's really s- making this into a restaurant destination as well and i can see that anything so. i guess that's creative to me that's what i'd like to see you know for me i i'm a huge I'm not going to use the word foodie after that, but yeah. I, I, I'm a huge fan of food. I love cooking. I love going to good restaurants. I watch the Food Network as often as I watch Comedy Central <laughs> or brutal slaying videos on the internet <laughs> um, or abortion videos on the internet. So yeah. let's keep up. There's a motif. There's a theme going today. Let's keep that going. Um, and so I'm, I, you know, I don't have a problem with that. I want it to be a destination for when people want something interesting, creative, or unique. You know, this should be an area. Yeah. Um, Deep Ellum kind of arose originally, from my understanding, as a place where people just happened to go for music. It was a place the cops didn't come, so a, this was a big black area for mm-hmm. a long time. Um, and so this is where they kind of congregated. They were able to open their own bars and their, their own mm-hmm. music, and then a lot, you know, more white artists started to come in. Um, but there wasn't a conscious decision of let's make Deep Ellum an artsy, creative place. It just kind of happened. Then when there was that kind of collapse in the late '90s, early 2000s. Um, I think it caused a lot of people in the area to focus on, you know, what do we want this area to be? And now there's a concerted effort to, we we want this to be an art district. We, we, you know, we want the high, maybe the high art, you would call it, down off Ross, mm-hmm. you know, at the Wiley Theater and stuff like that. Right, right. And this, you know, I don't know if you'd call it lowbrow art. <laughs> I mean, right, I certainly right. would, well, yeah, but yeah. more the blue collar right, art. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, I like that there's a concerted effort. This is what we want. We want this to be an area where people on Friday are right, hell, every day of the week to come and, and come see artists, come see musicians, come come try good food, culinary art. you know. And I, I think that's cool because it's giving us a real direction of what we want to do. I mean, well, producing shows you mm-hmm. know, down here. Sure. Um, I, it's, it's nice to have a goal because then you know where you're going. Mm-hmm. And it's people seem really active in it. You right. know, and very protective now of Deep Ellum, where I don't think maybe even 15 years ago they would have thought about it as something that needed to be protected. And then we have Deep Ellum Preservation Society and right. Deep Ellum Foundation. And I just, I just, I hope in 10 more years we're back up to where we were with the number of people, but with a better idea of what we want to accomplish. Yep. Well, what, what you said about the lowbrow art and the highbrow art is interesting now to see how the highbrow art is trying to kind of pull some of yeah. our artists mm-hmm. and do shows there too, as well, to kind of get some sort of fire under the connection between highbrow art and lowbrow art. So, um, and then the other thing is that, like, no one knows about this Knights of Pythias building, which is um, Booker T. Washington's grandson was the first uh, black architect to ever have a building built. And like, that's the building and it's here, you know, and it's in danger of getting knocked down almost every year. <laughs> but, have they uh, not marked it historical? It's historical now, but there's, I mean, West, I believe Westdale owns it now. Mm-hmm. And so they're going to try to kind of resurrect it into this hotel, a boutique hotel and some parking and, and a big grand ballroom. Yeah, I believe even if something's historical, by definition, it has to serve a function right. or a purpose. Like, that's why there's the historic houses on Swiss, but people actually live in them mm-hmm. or they rent them out for like weddings and stuff. Right. I think that but uh, there's like a federal law that says anything sitting on land has to be used you mm-hmm. like there's a law that says you can't just buy land and sit on it waiting for the price increase if you right. it's like seven years if you don't do something yeah anybody can come in and buy it from well, you so we can like... take over congress now <laughs> hot damn <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like that building would be perfect to turn into you know like maybe a museum for this district that would be, be an, i would love museum, to have a deep an museum gallery, that would be gallery, amazing you know yeah, it'd be beautiful. Yeah, so. or move the Deep Elm Trading Company into it. Into it, that'd be great too. So out of curiosity, the eight track knows museum this, but uh, does anybody where, know where the name, the, at least the story behind the name Deep Elm? No, no, really, I don't. Chris, you know this. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. So it's like you were saying that the the people would say, "Hey, where do I go buy my uh, see bands or go 
buy my drugs or where are the prostitutes down? And they mm-hmm. would say it's deep down in, on Elm. But they would say deep, El- it was Elm. Elm and they would Street. say in Elm yeah. Street. And they say deep Elm. Um. And it was just kind of a, a misuse of the name. And this just Very meant cool. further away from the downtown area. This yeah. was considered, like we say, Lower Greenville or Lois. Mm-hmm. They would call this deep Elm. And then Whitey turned it into Deep Ellum. Deep Ellum. Mm-hmm. Took it away from the Black Beauty. <laughs> exactly. So um, it's ours now. You can't have it back. <laughs> like well, rock and roll, rap, everything. <laughs> right. Yeah, everything good. We made now it everybody out. knows black people didn't invent rock and roll. Marty McFly did. <laughs> he took that right away from them. So. And Forrest Gump took everything else that blacks did in history. So, um, well, I'll tell you what, Chris, it's been wonderful having you in here, and and it's nice to meet somebody else that's been through the some of the history that I have around this place. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, Deep Ellum's part of my heart like yeah, i'll, I'll sure. never not love this place i grew up here my uh i think our first show we ever played was like lois green Bowl. but other than that the liquid lounge and curtain club been my home for years right you know and even when i started playing by myself a couple of years ago not with myself by myself nice. um or both <laughs> yeah, on stage it's performance art people leave it alone <laughs> uh you know liquid Li- wit and liquid lounge gave me a a start again right back on weekends with cool. no when those are and so i got i just got to give love to them and everybody down here really i mean how many great bands have i seen at trees right it's over the years good. so uh long live deep ellum i'm very excited yeah. now it's time for uh, a little game we like to play called what's in the box what's in the box what's in the box <laughs> 